Here are my two oldest daughters. They are six-year-old twins by marriage, we call them. We have a his and a hers, and then our 10-month-old is our ours. She's the one that spit up to me just off stage right now. I don't normally prepare for uh, presentations like this, but it was a good, uh, good icebreaker, so thanks, Riley. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so these are my girls at Legoland, and uh, you know, a couple months ago, I looked at my Facebook account, and on this account, I saw some pictures uploaded from my iPhone, and I thought, I, I, took the, I know I took these pictures, but I didn't upload them to my Facebook, so does this automatically happen? What's the, what's the deal? So upon further investigation and in, in looking at these photos, uh, some of the captions were miscapitalized, and I said, ah. So I said, I said, Moya, do you know, uh, did you put these pictures on my Facebook? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, can you show me how to do that for my iPhone? <laughs> so, so, so she did, and it's great. So now I know how to upload photos to my Facebook from my iPhone. Um, uh, another time we're driving in the car and I, and I hand her my phone and I say, Moya, we call your mom and tell her we're on, we're on our way. And she's fiddling around with it, and I'm like, Moya, what are you doing? She said, I'm searching your iPhone. <laughs> That's Moya. And, it, and, I, and, and I said, Moya, can, can you show me how to do that? And she said, sure, and she showed me how to do that, so now I know how to search my iPhone. So, so Moya, thanks again. Um, the, these girls have been a, uh, a source of information. Uh, perhaps at some times, maybe, maybe we don't uh, value what we learn from our children. But as a school board member in Denver uh, in the 90s and the, and the early uh, 2000s, I've, I've been grappling with this, uh, with the issue of, dro of the dropout rate. And, uh, you know, we've been thinking about the complexity and, and, and what should happen. And really the statistics tell us that one of these two girls going through a public school system should not graduate. I find that unacceptable. I find that to be a crisis situation. And I looked back at what I can learn from them and what I have learned from them in looking at education. The first thing is that they're very different. So one of my daughters very much likes a traditional structured classroom. Another one likes a more self-directed, self-timed environment. We do a great job in early childhood education of making that so, of allowing kids to find their, their own way and to teaching them and reaching them in the way that makes sense for how they learn. And then in later education, we seem to forget that. And we, we seem to try to make it more prescriptive um, and, and tell people, this is how you have to learn, this is what you have to read, this is how you have to do it. But what I found in their last year, which was their year of kindergarten, is that they were treated very differently in two different situations and two different models because they learned differently, very appropriately so. The other thing that I found is my daughter saying that it was fun to be at school. And why in preschool and kindergarten were they having so much fun? And why are we hearing in later years that kids aren't having this kind of fun? Why do we separate fun from learning? Because we don't do that in kindergarten, yet we find ourselves doing that later in, in later years. And so wherever there's a fun thing to do, there, there's an opportunity for learning. And whenever there's learning, there's an opportunity to have fun. And, um, and we, should, we should never separate those things. Uh, some kids are self-driven and self-motivated, and it makes sense to reach them just through the academics. That's what turns them on. But for a lot of other kids, it's art, it's science, it's sports, and if we're not providing those things, we're not providing the hook to get them to want to stay, to get them to want to learn. So fun and learning, I think, need to be the same thing throughout the course of, uh, of education. You know, when we read at night, we always let the girls pick their own book. The, our usual rule is they, each of them pick a book and they read to us, and then we get to pick a book and we read back to them. That's a deal. They get, to, they get to choose because we know that if they choose, they're very interested in that topic. They're very interested in, in what they choose. Yet I remember a lot of times in high school where I was handed the book and they said, here's the book. And, not, and after reading the book, here's the discussion questions. We weren't allowed to create uh, 
our own curriculum or, or find what we are interested in and, and drive after that. We do a great job of letting kids choose their own books and their own discussion in kindergarten, and then we seem to lose that in later years. The, the wonderful topic of testing. And so in, in, in this realm of, uh, in our state of CSAPs, testing is done for teacher accountability and to measure schools against each other. Uh, it, it's measured to, uh, you know, they're put out there to, to measure um, a progress for, for funding. However, when my, when my daughters were, were tested, thankfully, their tests were there to assess how they were doing, how the individual child was doing in kindergarten, so that teachers could make adjustments as to, to how they should be teaching and what they should be teaching. And again, this is something we do in kindergarten, a great job of assessing child progress. And then in later years, we test for other things that don't focus on the child. We lose the focus on, uh, on why we're all there. And, and again, many times that, fun, that uh, the testing is tied to funding. The incentive then, teach to the test. So kids get very good at learning how to take tests, but not very good at learning for the sake of learning. And then finally, I don't know how many of you saw the recent study that showed that kindergarten teachers are, are worth about $320,000. That figure is arrived at because that's a difference between uh, a teacher who has reached their child in an adequate way in kindergarten and their peers who don't. So those, that's, an annual, uh, that's an annual salary difference between those who have had good child-teacher interactions and those who have not. One single year, 320,000. And taking one classroom, good interaction, one classroom, either weren't in kindergarten or didn't have a very good interaction, they grow up to be adults, and that's a difference in, in a year of work, 320,000. When my kids came home and say, I love my teacher, they're really talking about a connection that, that the teacher has made with them, a connection that, uh, where the teacher has made learning fun and fun learning. Um, and again, it's something that, uh, that we tend to lose. We know that in early, early childhood education, that when teachers are having an adequate uh, connection with kids, that the kids themselves have healthier lifestyles and higher earning much later in life. And so the five things I've learned about education, really I think it's this basic and I learned them from my kids. The first is that you need to individualize education because all kids are different. We do a great job of this when they're young and then we seem to lose focus. Ooh. <laughs> That's dramatic. Uh, the, the, the second is to make sure that learning is fun. Again, not to separate learning from fun or fun from learning. Um, again, we do a great job of it when they're young. We just got to keep that going. We got to make sure the hooks are there to keep kids in school. The third is that there's passion. We're all passionate. We, we all learn much better when we're passionate about the topics. Let's help our kids find that passion uh, to work with the teacher, to find what's, what interests them. And when we do, we know that they'll learn much better. Progress should always be measured. Um, I'm, I, I think testing is an important thing, but testing should be focused on the child, not so much on the class. Um, again, it's, it's to measure how we're doing in terms of, uh, in, in terms of uh, reaching our children. And then finally, the teacher-child interaction has been shown time and time again to be the most critical aspect in, uh, in making sure that, that our kids uh, uh, learn how to learn and, and have an adequate education. And so I learned all these things from, uh, from my kids, my kids in, in kindergarten and going through last year. I submit them to you as things we should continue in the rest of, uh, of the K-12 system and beyond. Uh, evidence shows that, that, the, that there is positive um, results from, an, from a, uh, a good quality early education uh, experience. And so that, that leaves what I'm able to learn from my last daughter, from, uh, from my 10-month-old, and uh, time can only tell what that will be. Thank you.